Thank you. Hello, everybody. Today, I will be reading chapter one from my young adult novel, Changes in the Weather. Chapter one, Under the Weather. My eyes fly open, oversized t-shirt drenched in sweat. I lie awake in bed, again. Roaring highway traffic outside the motel fills my ears. I can't stand those sounds. Tires scraping against the road and engines kicking off in the parking lot always remind me of us packing our car, escaping. It's hard to remember the melody and comfort of our home, the chitter chatter of the neighbors making small talk in the streets, Mr. Gnello tapping his foot against the porch as he read the daily paper, Mrs. Burris walking her rescue dogs of all types and sizes along the uneven sidewalks of Davignon Street, and the Cleggs, with their cozy bookstore, The Bookworm, always letting me in on warm days to soak up the AC. Sometimes I try to close out all the clatter of the outside world to find those sounds, the music of home, but my head is constantly filled with something else, the quickened pulse and breathlessness of fear. Ever since the hurricane swallowed our home, we've been traveling place to place, packing, unpacking, and packing again. It's been three days since we moved into this motel, and we leave tomorrow. I don't even bother to unzip my bag. I know the drill. Tonight, like most nights, I can't sleep. The room is dark except for the high beam headlights rushing across the popcorn walls every so often, and the phone that lights up my mother's anxious face. She's still searching for a job. When the waves of wind and mountains of water hit my town, they devoured everything in their path, including the school where my mother taught. She'd been a part-time art teacher there for 17 years, my entire life. Nothing she loved more than teaching. Children's faces glowing with curiosity made her happy, back when she was happy. After the storm left only ruins of her career, it left her in ruins too. Since then, like our home, our town, she's been crumbling into pieces. The dark circles under her eyes never fade. It's going to be okay, she tries to reassure me as she sits beside me in the bed, twirling my hair in her fingers. But I see her fake smile and how her hand jitters on the steering wheel. Tonight I had that dream, the reoccurring nightmare. Mama, Ambrose, and I sitting around our table ready to eat dinner, no fast food, our homemade garlic bread with tomato soup and cayenne and toasted cumin seeds, a family favorite. Mama goes into the living room for a while to turn off the TV. She's gone a while, so I look for her. I see her slumped on the living room sofa, eyes fixed on the screen, biting her nails. There's a map of the United States, New Orleans, our home, in dark red. Headline, Hurricane, Category 5. Then the dream cuts to us scrambling, filling boxes and bags, trying to choose what we take and what we leave behind. Cue blackness, mama crying, staring at the ruins. In other words, the dream becomes a nightmare and that nightmare is our life. After that, I force my eyes open and wake in a puddle of sweat like now. Slowly, my heartbeat calms, but it can take hours for me to fall asleep again, to feel safe again. Well, I never really do. Dear neighbors and friends, some lost to the waters, others too weak to fight, too frail to flee. Mrs. Fitzgerald and her husband, 79 and 81. When the hurricane hit, they both insisted they'd stay. Our lives are here, they said, and if we go, at least we passed at home. They did. Miss Taylor lost her one-year-old baby. When the rescue boat arrived, a gush of wind pushed both back and under the water. After that, only Trinity's mother's head bobbed to the surface. All I had of home was my yellow backpack, decorated with badges Des brought me back from all her trips. In under an hour, I'd crammed into it all the things that defined me from then on. My scrapbook with smudged pages, a charm bracelet Mama made, her purple hand-embroidered scarf with sequin tassels, and a few faded photos. I wonder what else I would have taken if I'd had more time. Maybe I would have taken more time. Thank you.